Google recently released a new vibe coding prototyping tool in AI Studio, and it's really freaking good. Actually, check out this voice to video short story generator that I built with it. All right, here we go. Far beneath the black waves, something ancient stirred, its eyes glowing like twin lanterns in the endless dark. Process this. Ships that sailed above whispered tales of strange songs that pulled sailors overboard, never to be seen again. Process this. Far beneath the black waves, something ancient stirred, its eyes glowing like twin lanterns in the endless dark. Ships that sailed above God's whispered tales of strange songs it's that pulled closer. sailors overboard, never to be seen again. When storms came, the creek... So if you just go to aistudio.google.com and click on the builder link, you'll see this page right here. And you have like 16 different little modules. And I kind of like this approach, especially for vibe coders without a technical background, because they can kind of see and conceptualize different capabilities of, you know, an AI builder, essentially, um, where you can kind of think about how you can link them together to create really interesting AI infused based experiences, essentially. And that's exactly what I did. I thought to myself, it'd be really cool to have like a microphone where I, I'm able to t tell a simple story. And then after each scene, say a key phrase, like process this, and then feed it into the image generation model, which would then go ahead after you're done recording, allow you to make edits on the actual image and then be able to take each of the scenes, the scene images, and then convert them to video with VO3. So there's actually six different uh, modules that I used in order to create this. And I would say definitely avoid trying to one shot a more complex prototype like this take it step by step. Don't do what I did. I really just wanted to stress test to see, you know, how good it is and if it could one shot such a complex app. Spoiler, it can't. You know, it took about 20 or 30 follow-up prompts, but I'll show you all the different things that I used. First, I used Nano Banana, um, and then this allows you basically to create images and also edit them, and it's really good. It's like the best, you know, in its class at that sort of thing. Um, I also, wanted to use fast AI responses right here. So this one is used specifically so that after I say process this, it will take that description and create a more vibrant, you know, image-based description that then gets feed into, fed into Nano Banana up here to generate the scene image. Um, we also use generate images with a prompt here. I, what else is there? We got fast AI responses, control image aspect ratio. This didn't work as good as I hope it, hoped it would, as you'll see. Um, generate speech as well. So in the app, I make it so that it will take my voice over and instead of using my voice, it will use somebody else's voice at the end. Um, and then finally we have animate images with VO right up here. And I believe that's everything. So. Once you do this, you'll see up here, you have all these little modules attached to your prompt. You don't need to put those up front. You can always add them, you know, after the fact. And then right here, describe your idea. This is where your prompt goes. This is where you say, this is how, exactly what the flow is, et cetera, et cetera. And so then you go ahead after, you know, you've specified this and you click build and it will create an initial prototype of your app. Okay, so that was kind of very annoying. I ran into a rate limiting issue because I'm using VO3. So if you use VO, you're gonna run into rate limiting issues if you're trying to build with it because you have to generate so many videos for tests. So this is actually fast forward like three days from what you just saw, the last uh, clip me, and I was able to work with it a little bit more each day until I hit a freaking rate limit. Um, so I actually added um, a couple things here, like this visual storyboards, gen uh, the, the generation settings. I made it allow uh, us to sp specify like a sort of like a feel for the video and also um, to try to create consistent characters, which you'll see here in a second. Uh, we're gonna have a story about like a sea monster. <laughs> um, so you also say I, I added in painting as well. I uh, will you can edit the image before you get it ported over to actual video. All right, here we go. 
Far beneath the black waves, something ancient stirred, its eyes glowing like twin lanterns in the endless dark. Process this. Ships that sailed above whispered tales of strange songs that pulled sailors overboard, never to be seen again. Process this. When storms came, the creature rose slowly, scales shimmering like shattered stars, hungry for voices to drag back into the deep. Process this. All right, so first one looks pretty good. Got different colored eyes here. I know the second one, I want to actually have a ship um, above water with the creature in the distance. Um, so it looks like these actually didn't do too bad of a job. Um, if I come over here to this, this one right here and click on edit image, we'll see that, let me scale this down just a bit. Um, this whole area, what I want to do is I don't even want to do any of the in painting stuff like this. I'm going to clear selection. I'm going to have it generate an entirely, um, new image, but I'm going to use the upload image feature to feature the same reference image, um, that we uploaded over here and tell it to create a ship like on, on the ocean scene at nighttime or something. So, um, all right, so ancient ship on the turbulent seas during nighttime, sea monster is barely visible in the distance with his head above the water. Let's see what this actually does. Let's hit edit and check it out. Oh, okay, that's not too bad actually. If I hit edit image, we'll see, oh darn, it made it in the portrait mode. So freaking frustrating. So I know like if I were to generate a video with this image right here, it's gonna be, uh, it's, it's gonna have bars to the side and then it'll probably just kind of zoom them out like that. But either way, I, I'm cool with this. And let's see if this actually makes a video for us. Hey, actually, let's go back over here, hit edit image and let's make the eyes um, yellow. So let's ask and see if it will actually do that. Oh, perfect, it worked although it kind of just changed. Actually, I kind of like that. All right, so let's do the in painting. Let's do this one since these ones are green, just to show a demonstration. I'm gonna say, make the eyes green. I mean, uh, orange, yellow. Oh, yes, it worked. Oh, okay. All right, barring the fact that we're not gonna get true, you know, 16 by nine for every shot, let's go ahead and actually uh, generate the videos. Look out! Gods, help us! It's coming closer. Okay, so I took this into Adobe Premiere. I stitched together the three little video clips. I added a little bit of background music, and this is the result. Bar beneath the black waves, something ancient stirred, its eyes glowing like twin lanterns in the endless dark. Ships that sailed above God, whispered us. tales of strange songs it's that pulled closer. sailors overboard never to be seen again. When storms came, the creature rose slowly, scales shimmering like shattered stars, hungry for voices to drag back into the deep. I don't know about you, obviously it's not Steven Spielberg. However, the fact that we were able to knock something like a prototype like this out relatively quickly, you know, barring the rate limiting issues, it's extremely impressive. This is so freaking cool. I would love to take this into like a real production ready app because there would have to be obviously um, major updates with the consistency in the workflow. Here's another one that I generated just for the fun of it. The metal door of the abandoned spaceship creeped open and green mist poured out, swirling like it was alive. Inside the control panel still blinked even though no one had touched them for over a hundred silent years. Then, a voice came through the static, soft, broken, and whispering Jake's name. 
even though Jake had never been born yet. And there you go. So as you can see, you could use something like Google AI Studio to get a prototype of your idea to see even if it's possible. Now the next step from there would be to export this code, perhaps uh, you're able to port it over to GitHub if you wish, and then you could perhaps work on it further in something like Cursor or just start, start over you know, entirely from scratch. So very cool, pretty impressed with it. It doesn't one shot these complex apps like this. Definitely would recommend taking them one step at a time, one feature at a time and work on it on an iterative process to try to re avoid all those you know, the headaches with trying to one shot a more complex app like this. So as always, everybody make sure to subscribe. I'll see you soon and goodbye.